The president trying to get his infrastructure bill across the finish line, with Indiana's congressional delegation debating the details. Today we'll talk with Congressman Andre Carson and Congressman Trey Hollingsworth. Plus the latest on the legal battle between the governor and the attorney general and what state health officials are saying about the Delta variant here in Indiana. It's all ahead this Sunday in Focus. Good morning. State health officials updating Hoosiers Friday on the fight against COVID-19 and the rapidly spreading Delta variant here in Indiana. We'll have more on that coming up later this morning. And there's also the legal battle here in Indiana playing out between Governor Holcomb and Attorney General Todd Rokita. The governor winning a battle in court this past week as the AG files a lawsuit of his own on a separate issue. We'll talk about that with our panel coming up. But we start in the nation's capital as lawmakers inch closer to a vote on the infrastructure deal. Perhaps in the coming weeks, the president's still trying to get that bill across the finish line while also touting other policies and tax credits that he says will help American families. Our Washington correspondent Alexandra Limon has more. President Biden has been pushing for an infrastructure deal that includes an investment in early childhood education, and he's making the argument that that investment will help the U.S. economy in the long run. America's back. President Joe Biden says his COVID relief bill is helping the U.S. economy rebound, and he's making the pitch that investing again, this time in education and child care, will do even more. Does anybody think in the 21st century, with the change that's taking place in technology and across the board, that 12 years of education is enough? As part of his human infrastructure plan, the president proposes providing free preschool education, as well as free community college. That could boost earnings of high school graduates with low wage jobs, by nearly $6,000 a year on average. President Biden says expanding child tax credits, lowering health insurance premiums, and making child care more accessible and affordable will help middle class families. My plan will also provide up to 12 weeks of paid family leave for medical care. And the most difficult moments someone will ever face, no one should have to choose between a job and a paycheck and take care of someone you love. In addition to long-term benefits, President Biden says his infrastructure package will also provide an immediate boost. We're going to make the biggest investment in roads and bridges since the construction of the interstate highway system, literally creating millions of good-paying jobs. You know, if you're really serious about this, let's look at traditional infrastructure, and that is roads, bridges, rural broadband, which is so important to the country right now, uh, and not muck it up with uh, things that have nothing to do with infrastructure. President Biden is still hoping to convince enough Republicans to support at least a portion of his infrastructure package, but he admitted today he may have to rely only on Democrats in order for other parts like education and green energy investments to be approved by the U.S. Senate. Reporting in Washington, Alexandra Limon. Alexander, thanks. This past week, Congressman Andre Carson was in Indianapolis for an event supporting the American Jobs Plan. He says the infrastructure bill would provide specific benefits for Hoosiers. We asked him about the plan after that event here in Indianapolis on Thursday night. How do you sell this infrastructure plan to Hoosiers when many of your fellow congressional representatives in Indiana have not committed their support? Well, I think when you're talking about the over 40,000 roads and bridges across our country that have to be repaved, resurfaced, and even rebuilt. We're talking about rebuilding our, 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 our rail infrastructure, our highway infrastructure, our airways, and more importantly, broadband, not only in rural communities, but in urban centers. And in the next decade, most American vehicles will be fully electric. And as vehicles are getting smarter and becoming more autonomous, we're going to have to make an investment in smart roads that can communicate with these vehicles to reduce fatalities. So this is a monumental piece of, a piece of legislation, and I think that it impacts Hoosiers and certainly Americans. Do you think the bill uh, gets passed and signed into law later this month? You know, uh, there are projections that we'll be able to close this thing. It'd be ideal to do it at the end of the month, but there have been projections about maybe early fall. So we'd love to get our Republican buddies on the record as having voted for this. We know they're concerned about 2022 and they're concerned about Donald Trump campaigning against them, but we're urging them to be bold because whether you're Republican or Democrat, uh, black or white, this is great for all Americans. 
All right, last week we also spoke with two Indiana Republicans to get their take on the infrastructure talks, including Congresswoman Victoria Sparts and Congressman Trey Hollingsworth, who spoke with our Kristen Eskow. Do you support this most recent bipartisan infrastructure deal? Well, I much of that deal hasn't been put into writing yet. There's still a lot of talking points and very little pen to paper legislative activity on it. Much still needs to be worked out about how it is paid for. And I think those provisions are going to detail whether it will get a lot of Republican support or not. What would that mechanism have to be for the bill to gain your support? Well, number one, there are two big pieces here. Number one is making sure that it's focused on infrastructure that matters most to Hoosiers. I hear about roads. I hear about bridges. I hear about locks. I hear about dams all of the time. I want to make sure we're focused on that infrastructure specifically. And secondarily, I don't want to see gargantuan tax increases that will impact hardworking Hoosiers today to pay for those infrastructure improvements, right? We've seen where user fees can really work to ensure those that are using more of those roads are paying for more of those roads versus just blanket taxation that tends to be redirected by wily politicians into their pet projects instead of the projects that really matter to Hoosiers. I think we should come up with bipartisan deal where both sides negotiate and we can come to some more narrow focused infrastructure bill that both sides can support. And I think the Senate is working on these issues. Unfortunately, the House and our Speaker doesn't want to work on any bipartisan legislation. It's unfortunate. So hopefully what Senate is doing is going to happen because we want to invest in future assets, right? The assets that bring future returns. We want to have good roads and bridges. We need to have high-speed internet access at the electricity of the 21st century. And one can debate about all other issues. You know, there are a lot of things and the wishful thinking for both sides, but we also need to figure out how we can pay for it. And I think on a narrow deal, we can find common ground and hopefully it can happen.